So I've given it a little top up. So now she looks absolutely spot on. Spot on. Well, hello there, Perfect Drafters. Here we are again, and this week, I've not let you down. Not that I do every week, because that makes it sound like I do every week. But this week, definitely not. The Hertog Jan, I'm going to call it Hertog, because it could be Hertog Jan or Hertog Jan, Han, Jan. Anyway, I'm going to call it the Hertog. The Hertog. That's loaded. That's in there. That's safe. That's what we're going to be reviewing. So, happy days. And it does feel happy days because after the Left Royale, I kind of wanted something that was a bit easier to drink. And that's what I've heard this is. I've heard this is an easier lager to drink. Obviously, the Left Royale, more of a, a Belgium ale. But this one's meant to be a bit easier. And I did struggle a little bit with the Left Royale. Enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. Did enjoy it. Would I buy it again? Maybe not. Maybe not. But I would say, you know, before that, what did I have? I had the Dark Arts. And that, that was an absolute pleasure. It really was. And I am trying to, for these reviews, windle my way windle there's probably a better word than that weave i'm just thinking of other words with a w but root my way through all of the kegs on the perfect draft and i think i'm doing all right I'm not doing too bad but the left royale definitely was the one that held me up the most almost hit the teens in terms of the clock on the old not the clock <laughs> it's not a clock the countdown of days, it's kind of a clock. It's kind of a clock. Yes, yeah, so I almost hit the 19 on that. Didn't. Finished it off with the last dregs on the 20 days. Before the Dark Arts, what did I have? It wasn't that memorable, obviously. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> No. What was it? <laughs> Let me have a look at my videos. Okay, so before the Dark Arts, it was the Goose Midway. That was a very easy drink. Very easy. Very nice. But it was, you know, that's a session, session IPA, so you expect it to be. And before that, the Left Noel, probably a little bit... Uh, a little bit stronger, obviously, than the Goose Midway and took a little bit more time, but it was a pleasurable drink, especially over the festive period, as it should be. So that was good as well. The Left Royale with that extra bit of strength did make me struggle. And I thought, it's going to be nice to load this Hertog. It's going to be a little pleasure. I've got to be honest, I had heard that this was a very easy drink, um, very drinkable, very smooth, a session lager. Now, is it a session lager? You could argue not at 5.1%. I don't know really what ABV classifies a drink as a session, but I think for me, it is below 5%. It has to be below 5% to be a session. So with the new Stella ABV that's going about, is that now a session drink? Food for thought, or in this case, drink for the think. That's terrible, but you know. So a little bit about the keg. It is £31.90 of your finest. So one of the cheaper kegs, happy days. Let's go over to the Big Bold Reviews website. Let's see if this works well, yeah. Let's go over to the Big Bold Reviews website and have a look at some of the facts. Okay, so at £31.90, you're looking at just over the £3 for your pint. Okay, so not bad. If we're looking at keg returnage, we're looking at tokens, um, we're looking at maximum discount and things like that, we're looking at £2.11 a pint. So not bad at all. Not bad at all. Calorie-wise, 
nothing in the region of the left royale. You're looking at around 246 calories per pint. So that's interesting. Beer Hall classed as a lager hybrid beer. I don't know what the hybrid beer bit's about. Probably I should, but I don't. It's brewed in the Netherlands, so Dutch, and the brewery is Hertog Jan. So interestingly, the talk recently um, from Beer Hawk has been around another Dutch beer coming on. I think they have said it's a new brewery though, so um, it probably won't be the Hertog uh, Vice beer, which you can also get as well. So not on the perfect draft, but they do do a Vice beer. And that actually is what my glass is. So not a perfect match for the beer, but it's a Hertog glass, so I've done all right. So the Hertog Jam Brewery, apparently in the early 1980s, the brewery actually played a major role in the revitalization of beer in the Netherlands. It was 1995 that it became part of uh, InBev, so hence the perfect draft linkage. And someone that has been contacting me a little bit over the uh, Big Bold Reviews website, and I'll give him a shout out now, is Alexander Postma. Now, sorry, I'm gonna call you Alex. Um, sorry, Alex, if I've uh, got your surname a tad wrong. I'm not the best with some of the pronunciations. If you go over some of my older videos, you'll see you're not the only one that's victim of Baldi's pronunciations, if you are. Might have got it spot on, might have nailed it. So, but anyway, Alex, he's been uh, contacting me a bit and he told me that the Hertog is one of his favorites. He's therefore obviously really looking forward to this review. So Alex, I hope I don't let you down. I hope the beer doesn't let us down. Uh, I feel like there's a bit of pressure on it now, but there's not. So if I don't like it, I don't like it. Sorry, I don't want to offend the whole of uh, the Netherlands, but uh, from what he's been saying and what, you know, he sent me some links to some Dutch comedy on YouTube, they've got a good sense of humour. So I think they'll be able to take a bit of criticism of their beer, should there be any. Alex himself classifies it as a Pilsner. Um, it doesn't mention Pilsner on the uh, on the Beer Hall website, but there we go. Pilsner Lager, that's probably what they mean by the hybrid lager. Um, and I have got Jupiler coming in next, and that's also a Pilsner. So a little bit of a Pilsner after a Pilsner, but I enjoy a Pilsner. I don't mind a Pilsner, so that should be happy days. I'm going to have to post what he sent me, the, the link to you know this YouTube video, um, that's a Dutch kind of take on British sports. It's it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Well worth a watch. For a start, you think, what am I watching? What on earth am I watching now? But there's actually other people that have done, you know, reaction videos to this video. It's that good. Bear with it and you'll have a laugh. So I did also ask him, in terms of snackage, what would you recommend if you're a Hertog fan? Um, he suggested Fuit. Yeah. I think I went back, well, I did go back and I said, what's Fuit? Could have Googled it. Sometimes I do get annoyed when people ask me questions nowadays because just have a Google of it, you know. But anyway, I asked him, being one of those annoying people, and said, what's Fuit? He said, it's Catalan, thin, dry, cured, sausage pork meat in a pork gut. So I will be having snackage, I won't be having that. Sorry about that, but um, it's one of those things. It's, it's obviously very hard to find around these parts. I said I'm not having that. He then said, well, try some Dutch cheese. And I do like a bit of cheese with, uh, with my beers. I have had a bit of cheese recently in my reviews, so I don't want to let you down, but I'm not having that. What I am having, and it's still a bit cheesy, because there's cheese in the flavour, it's Pringles Sizzling Extra Hot Cheese and Chilli. Yeah, so I like a Pringle, even when someone shows me a video of a Pringle burning and the amount of fat in said Pringle, I still like a Pringle. So I'm gonna have one of these, Extra hot. I think these are meant to be the hottest of the newer range. Three chilies. Doesn't always mean it's going to be hot, let's face it. Um, but I think in this sense, they are meant to be the hottest. Sizzling hot. Sizzling extra hot cheese and chilli. I couldn't find, for the life of me, 
the KFC Max Strong or Max Double Crunch Crisps. I tried, I failed, I can't get them. Anyway, that's snackage, that's coming up. I'm thirsty. Let's have a look at this keg. Let's pour out the Hertog. Let's have a look at what it looks like. I'm gonna have a sup, tell you what I think, then I'll have the snackage. Let's have a look. So there he is. There is the Hertog Jan. The Hertog. And look at that, it's got a royal seal of approval there. Reason for that is Hertog. He's a duke, named after a duke. The Duke of Brabant, no less. I'm guessing that's him just there, having a sup. The Duke of Brabant. And he probably would have had a sup as well because he was a folk hero, apparently. Yeah, in the uh, in the 13th century. So there he is, Duke of Brabant. In your honour, sir, I shall have some of your Hertog. It's a nice looking keg. Gold label, I like that. Gold label, it's not gold label. You know what I mean? The gold label beer. Was it gold label beer or gold label cider? <whistles> Terrible stuff. Terrible stuff. Um, but anyway, a, a gold coloured background. Hertog Jan. Got the Duke on it. Got the Royal Seal of Approval. Like I say, can't see it where it says Pilsner. But um, if it is, it is. Let's do the pour. Let's get stuck in. So there we are. And here we are with the Hertog glass. Like I say, um, I think that's the vice beer one. But anyway, let's crack in. Let's do the pour. It is a Harper, um, so it'll probably be disaster at half o'clock. But um, love a little gold rim. Love a little gold rim. Let's go. Wimped out a little bit there. That's a big head. Let's let it settle. Let's bring her in. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. I mean, that's it is a head on that little belter. But look at the bobs. Look at the bobs. It's a lively one. Happy days. First time I've used this glass. Um, give it a good, uh, give it a good clean. Looks all right. Looks all right, that. I'm happy with that. Nice colour, nice golden amber colour, which you kind of expect from this kind of quality of beverage. Looking forward to it, people. Let's get stuck in. So not an awful pour. Not the worst I've ever done. But I have done some absolute pearlers. Anyway, let's have a go. So I've given it a little top up. So now she looks... Absolutely spot on. Spot on. Look at that. The Duke. The Duke. In fact, he's on the glass as well. Didn't spot him there. And he looks a happy Duke. He does. Apparently, he was painted as the perfect model of a brave, adventurous and chivalrous Duke. And that's on Wikipedia. So, um... Gotta be true. Anyway, let's see if the fella has popped his face on a good beer. I'm happy I'm going into this. I'm happy I'm going into it because I just think it's going to be an easier drink. Let's get stuck in. Cheers, perfect drafters. Here we go. It's an easier drink straight off the bat. Yeah, I've said many a time in my reviews that my tastes have changed through having this perfect draft. The journey that I've gone on, it's tingled the taste buds, but it's rarely let them down. And what I would say is, I thought, yeah, I'm an IPA drinker now. I just am. I used to be a lager drinker. I'm now an IPA drinker. That's what this has done to me. I love a stout. That dark arts, <sighs> absolute belter. But 
it's the variety of what's available on this. It really is because have an IPA, but don't just stick to your IPAs. You know, start to enjoy them and then you think you're an IPA person. Then, you know, fire a drink like this in, which is easy to drink. I would say it is a, it tastes like a session lager. It does. It doesn't taste over 5%, I don't think. It doesn't taste like the traditional Stella. Not as strong as that. It tastes very easy to drink. There's some there's some foam on the on the top of it, and I've got to avoid the foam because otherwise I'll get a foam nose. Crisp, crisp, and I've got some crisps, but no, that's crisp. It's smooth. It's definitely refreshing. For thirty one pounds ninety, that's a quality keg. Oh, that's nice. And I think the three degrees temperature of the perfect draft suits that down to the ground. I think it does. Yeah, it's lovely. Each time you go in, you get the bulbs coming back up. It is a, is it? I don't know. Don't know if it's a nucleated glass or not. I hope it is. Doesn't matter if it is or not. It's working with it. Yeah, it revitalizes the bulbs. Yeah, pleasant. It's tingling the tongue. A little bit of a bitter aftertaste. But not a bad one, not a bad one. There's the bone nose. Um, yeah, there's nothing that's going to upset you about that. There's just not. If you like lagers in the slightest, this ain't going to upset you. This is going to please you. I mean, it's not going to blow you away. Don't get me wrong. You're not going to go, wowzers, that's the best drink that I've ever had. Because it's not. And it's not in the sense that it's not that distinctive. You know, it's not got an Elvis juice or high wire grapefruit smash round the face. But then you wouldn't buy this drink to get that smash round the face. It's not got your dark arts, licorice and chocolate, you know, stout. Of course it hasn't. It's not a stout. You know, it's not got your citrus punch of a goose IPA. You're not buying it for that. You're buying this drink for a nice, crisp, refreshing, easy to drink drink. And it is. That's what it is. Quality keg. I hope that never goes off the perfect draft because it's not one that you're hear much about I don't think um, I don't know if there's many other reviews on it around the perfect draft and things like that but I've not heard that much about it I've heard a lot more about the Jupiter and then the Spaten you know Spaten's always or Spartan Spaten Spartan is always you know mentioned especially the Oktoberfest version Low and Brow same again often mentioned again Oktoberfest mentioned galore. Um, Jupel has mentioned a fair whack. This little beauty deserves to be mentioned more. I'm sorry, the Duke. I'm not, not personally, not really, you know, but it's good. It's good. It's good. I mean, just thinking about it now, probably a bit of pork gut will go down a treat with it. It's not, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, lovely, lovely. Let me have my snackage before I grade it. That's what I'm going to do because there is some cheese within the Pringles. <laughs> Never seen any cheese, has it? Never seen any cheese. But anyway, let's have a bit of snackage. Once you pop, uh, you know, you're popping. Now then, I know I struggle sometimes with getting into snackage, but this little baby, no way. Pringles. <laughs> I tried to be cocky there. Tried to rip it off. Huh? Anyway, failure. Um, let's have a whiff. Definite cheesy whiff. Um, <laughs> a lot of people 
would have, uh, you know, because you see some, I do see some of the beer tubers and stuff, and they would have been sniffing the pint. I don't sniff the pint. I sniff the Pringles. Anyway, I'm going to stick my nose in again. Smelling cheesy, and this might sound odd because some people go, well, you can't smell spice, but oh, I think you can in a way, you know. Um, now, I'm trying to think of an example where you smell a spice. Where do you smell a spice? What smells spicy? Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. Um, I, I'm probably just thinking curries, really. I'm probably thinking, you know, with a madras or a vindaloo, and I don't go above the vindaloo, I don't go for a file. Someone, I think, did mention it. When I was first out starting doing some of these reviews, someone said, I'd love you to review a file. I'm like, who wants to do that? It's like these people that do the old extreme chilies and stuff like that. I mean, fair play to them. Have a go. But I ain't having a go at that. Not on YouTube, you know. I don't want pictures of me sweating my... my brow sweating. You've got a sweaty brow, sir. Good luck. Um, as in, that's a good luck. It's not. So I'm not doing that. But anyway, I am going to go in. I'm going to be done for now if these are well well hot, you know. I mean, if they were actually flaming hot, like this packet suggests, I mean, they've got to be over-egging it, haven't they? And I'm obviously assuming, because of what I've just said, they're proper over-egging it. Anyway, Baldy, you're going on enough. Let's get stuck in to some sizzling extra hot cheese and chilli Pringles. Right. Not messing about. There's three Pringles there. I like them. I like them. Yeah. They're good. They tingle the tongue. They do tingle the tongue. Um, could do with a bit more cheese coming through for me, but that may be because I want it as a beer snack. And for me, the more cheese in a beer snack, even a cheesy football, the better. So in this context right now, I want more cheese. It has got a kick. There's more of a chilli kick to it than a cheese kick to it. Um, and, you know, after a few, yeah, I did ram a few down there, not really thinking. But, yeah. Uh, they taste all right. They have got a chilli kick. Would have preferred a bit more cheese. But Pringles are so easy to eat. They're so easy to eat. And I don't know if it's just like down to the shape of them. You know, the way the shape around your tongue. And I heard they put more flavour underneath. You know, so it hits your right, you know, your tongue right and your taste bud's right. It's a taste bud tingling shape of a crisp. I'm sure they were the first to do this type um, shape. Obviously, there's now copycats, but um, no, they're good. They're good. I like them. How do they go with the Hertog? I thought they'd be all right. Yeah, I thought they would go well, and they do. It's a little pleasure, that is. Yeah. To have, you know, that spice of a crisp and then the coolness of your Hertog tingling on the tongue afterwards. That's a pleasure. Right, for the Hertog, I am going to give that... I'm going to give it an 8.5. I really like it. No, no, I'm not. I've just thought about what I gave the Spaten. I gave the spade an eight. Oh, mate, I gave the spade an eight. What am I going to do for you, Duke? Um, I, I, I feel bad downgrading him now, but I'm going to give him an eight as well because I think I enjoy it as much as the spade. 
just because I think it's an easier drink. I think it's an easier drink. I think the Spaten had a bit more about it, but I think this is... It's just a bit easier. Buy it for more of a session lager. But actually, you might have to be careful because it is 5.1%. Let's chat. Um, just thought I'd top that up. I mean, it isn't a pint. It isn't a pint. I'm not an animal. Uh, I mean, proper wouldn't you pop these are, aren't they? I mean, I probably wouldn't grade them as good as like your salt and vinegar ones. They are salt and vinegar Pringles, not the best hangover cure ever. I think they are. The what I would buy and have in stock if I was on holiday and was out drinking every night, I would have just a cupboard full of Pringles, salt and vinegar Pringles. And that's the beauty of the perfect draft, isn't it? You know, I think these half glasses, I wouldn't consider them before, but now, top your half up again, lovely and cold. It's a new fresh drink, but you're still within your pint. Now that is a pony head. It's a good head though, isn't it? It's good, Ed. So, yeah, I'm giving the Hertog an eight. That's getting an eight. I'm giving the Pringles... They have got a bit of spiciness about them, but I'm going to give them a seven. Um, just because I still don't like them as much as your standard salt and vinegar Pringles or your barbecue or even your sour cream and jive. Yeah, I think they were probably the three with the original. Okay, not three with the original, but four with the original. They were your standard. They were your staple Pringles, you know. Christmas, you would have all four of those lined up on the shelf. Uh, help yourself. But, you know, they've gone a bit crazy with some of the flavours. And, you know, they have to. They have to try these things out. And now they've gone down this, uh, you know, sizzling extra hot route. And they're good, and I think these are probably the best that I've had since their original four flavours. But um, still, for me, salt and vinegar, absolute gems. They're all right, though. Not bad. There are seven. So anyway, enjoyed that. Loved getting back into a bit of an easy, uh, more of a session, 5.1. More of a easy, smooth, refreshing beer. Um I'm kind of wishing it was summer, but let's not wish your life away. You know, that's an old boy thing to say, isn't it? That's a dad thing to say. But anyway, let's not wish your life away. But when it is in the summer and I'm able to enjoy one of these babies, I think it'll be a happy day. If you like that, please subscribe. Have a look over the back catalogue of videos. I can say that now because there's a fair few of them. There's a fair few of them. Have a look over those. Um, subscribe I will do more in fact the next one will be Jupiter looking forward to that little beauty um, is winking at me as I speak the bull on the Jupiter is winking at me so that's what's next following that I think hopefully there will be a new keg release towards the end of this month um, and hopefully I'll get that and probably pop that in after that, looking way ahead, not I'm looking at a wall, um, looking way ahead, there will be a quack as well, but I'm probably going to leave that until I've got a week off um, to recover. So yes, subscribe if you want to see those. Give this a like, please give it a like, share it away, have a look at the Big Bold Reviews website. I've made a few changes to that and I did put out a video last week, so check that out if you want to see what's on the website but for now perfect drafters for now i'm going to say cheers to the duke and i'm going to say cheers to you cheers perfect drafters cheers